Hey everyone, it's Jay. Uh, today we're going to start talking about one of the most important high-level topics uh, in the game of pool, but it, you don't have to be a high-level player to put this to use. What I'm talking about is angle management. How you manage the angles of your shots uh, in order to make the game as easy as possible. So before we start, in the last six weeks, uh, we've had over 200 new subscribers to the channel. And I want to make sure everybody understands the expectation for the channel. This channel is not about the spectacular shot. This channel is about how to win more games, how to win more matches. <clears throat> it's about taking your game to the next level how you can get there in the quickest manner possible. In other words, we're not going to be talking about practicing um, the shots that you'll see one time in a thousand. Uh, in a thousand racks you might see, you know, you might see an opportunity, there's a, there's a shot that's out there <clears throat> where it's the the object ball is here, and the cue ball is here, it's a dead scratch, uh, and the play is to bounce off of that, off the back of the pocket, and back on the table. I'm not doing those kinds of shots. They come up one in a thousand times, they're extremely risky, and you would never play those in a tournament. Um, now, if you're, if you're an A player and above, yes, you, you want to have shots like that in the bag, in your bag. Uh, and be able to use them. Uh, but for everybody else, uh, everybody that's trying to get to A, every A trying to get to shortstop, you're going to have some basic things that you need to do that will cover, e that you can do and play, and when you don't have an opportunity to do them, you can play safe and get out of it, and you'll win more games and win more matches. You'll lose more matches trying those spectacular shots than you'll win. Uh, so, with that said, um, today we're going to talk about the first part of angle management. Now, angle management is extremely important. At the, at the highest level in the game, it is what sets apart players. There are two things different at the top level of the game. The, the, let's call them the, the champions, okay? I'm talking about Gorst, I'm talking about Shaw, I'm talking about SVB, I'm talking about Earl Strickland, Ephraim Reyes, Buddy Hall, all of those people who have made it to that champion level uh, and are either in the Hall of Fame or will be in the Hall of Fame. Um, all of those players are shot makers. They all have the ability to make the same shots. Okay, or they, or they did at their peak. As they got older, of course, eyesight starts to fail and other things happen. Um, but at their peak, if you took all of them and put them at their peak, all of them shoot at about the same level. Yeah, they have favorite shots versus shots they don't like uh, that are different between the players, but as, as a whole, their shot making is roughly equivalent. There are three things that make them different. One is risk management. Some of them will take shots that are riskier than, uh, than the ones others will take. Um, Efren Reyes is a great example. Efren would take shots no other player would try because the other players felt they were too risky. Efren would take them anyhow uh, and he'd make a lot of them. Occasionally he'd miss them, but usually he'd make them. It's not that the other players weren't capable of making those shots, it's that the other players made the conscious decision that the shot was too risky and chose a different alternative. Um, the second thing is their level of aggression. And again, this is part of risk management. Um, Earl, Efren, SVB, Jason Shaw, they're all extremely aggressive. Okay? They're not going to duck unless they feel like there's a, uh, there's a situation on the table, whether it's a current shot or one down the line, uh, that is going to keep them from running the table and they're going to have to duck anyhow. Uh, and the third one is angle management. Uh, so in the recent Moscone Cup, uh, Chris, um, he had, 
he was on the hill and he screwed up his angle management. And as a result, he got way out of line. Uh, and then he screwed up his risk management and chose to be aggressive uh, and ultimately ended up losing the game because he was overly aggressive. Um, sometimes shot making isn't enough. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about angle management uh, and that means how we, how we need to be on a ball to make it easy to make and get the next lead and we're going to talk about how to get to that position. Okay, so today we're going to talk about entering the rails. Okay, angles entering the rails. So let's, let me start off with this. If I have a ball going to the pocket, that's my object ball. And the object ball we're going to put in the center of the pocket. We'll talk about cheating pockets in another video. Um, and our cue ball is here, that's our cue, and we've got a rail up here, okay? There are five ways to enter the rail. The first one is, is to stun it straight down the line. By the way, I want to mention something on tangent line that gets missed a lot of times. So we hear that the tangent line is the 90 degree angle where the, the ball is going to make contact. But what you have to remember is that it's not the center of the ball following the tangent line, it's the edge. So when you're, when you're figuring out tangent line, always make sure you leave about an inch. It's actually an inch and an eighth. Um, that's the actual tangent line the, cue, the center of the cue ball will follow. So when you're talking about tangent line, I'm going to label that. When you're talking about tangent line, it's the center of the cue ball, that's a ghost ball, uh, going to the rail. Okay, so if we shoot this to the center of the pocket, this angle from the line that you're, you're shooting to here, this is 90 degrees. Okay, that's the definition of the tangent line. Okay, so when you shoot, when you shoot a stun shot, and remember a stun shot is hit. Uh, you can go watch the video on stun shots, but a stun shot is hitting just below center on the cue ball. It's just a little bit below center to counteract the forward momentum. Okay, so this is 90 degrees. So, this is our first line. It's the stun line that goes 90 degrees. This is, this is the first angle that you enter the rail. That is a stun shot. Now, there are various types of stuns. There's stun back, there's stun forward, and there's stun. Okay? If you stun this forward... Well, okay, so let's, let's talk about another angle before we do that. Um, the second angle is what's called the rolling angle. Okay, and the rolling angle means that, let's say I have a, a shot like this, right? The rolling angle is when I hit it, if I just roll the ball, the cue ball's weight and momentum is going to carry it forward, okay? This is called rolling, the rolling angle. Uh, and this is Dr. Dave's peace sign, one of them. He uses the peace sign for a lot of stuff. It's approximately, well, okay, so this is, this is where the whole peace sign thing breaks down for this particular case, is because this rolling angle is different if the cue ball's here, if the cue ball's here. This one will hit and it will roll forward this way. This one will hit and it will roll forward this way. Okay, so rolling angle, is a way to get to the rail, um, and we're going to leave it there because it's a way to get to the rail, but 
it's not a good way to get to the rail because it changes depending on the angle that you have from the cue ball to the uh, jig ball. All right, so we have those. Now we have our stun shots, okay? We've got the, the standard stun. We have stun back, and we have stun forward, okay? Stun back and stun forward. Let me ask you a question. If you look at this shot on the one that's on the table, If you're going to pocket the one in the center of this corner pocket, which direction is running English? Okay? Do you know? Which direction is running English? Well, the answer is, think, well, so think about it for a second. Which direction is running English if I pocket that one ball in that corner pocket? The answer to that is, it depends. to use stun back, that means that running English would be in this direction, right? And if it's in that direction, that means that left hand English, stun left, backward stun left, would be running English. On the other hand, stun forward, right hand English becomes running English. Everybody follow that? So whether this cut is inside or outside, whether, whether I'm, I'm shooting inside English, which in this case would be right-hand English, uh, or I'm shooting outside English, which in this case would be left-hand English, I can get running English simply by controlling the angle that I'm entering the rail. Okay, and we're going to use this. We're going to use this a lot. Okay, so what about follow and draw. Those are our other two lines. So stun, uh, so stun is just below the center of the cue ball, stun back is just below that, and stun forward is either center ball with a little bit of angle on the cue or slightly above center ball. It's not follow, it's just stunning it forward. Sometimes it's called replacement English because it's used quite often when you want to put the cue ball exactly where the object ball is. So sometimes it's called replacement English. Um, all right, so we, talk, we talked about stunning and now let's talk about draw and follow. If I have the same setup, cue ball here, object ball to the side, and I draw the ball, what's going to happen is it's going to start, okay, let me draw my tangent line again. Okay, that's my tangent line. It's going to start traveling down the tangent line, and depending on how hard I hit it, it's then going to arc backwards. Okay, so you get a much steeper angle coming into the rail. Follow does the same thing. It starts off and, depend, and it starts off down the tangent line, and then it arcs off of it. So you get a much, much bigger angle if we were to extend this and, and maybe come down here. It would be a much bigger angle into this rail. Okay, or a much shallower angle into the rail. Okay, today, today, so let's talk about why you hear me say that the pros will usually do stun to the rail, spin to the leave. Okay? Top and bottom English are used to create angles coming into the rail. Okay, if I hit this softer, I get a curve sooner, I hit further out. If I hit this softer, or if I hit this harder, it comes up further before it begins to arc. Um, we're going to cover the top and the bottom side of this in another video. What I want to talk about right now is why the preference is stunned, why the pro preference is stunned to the rail, spin to the leave. And there are a couple of reasons for it. Uh, actually, there are several reasons for it. Number one, we can predict the tangent line. Yes, we know the tangent line is 90 degrees from the shot. 
okay? Always, 100% of the time, the stun slash tangent line is going to be 90 degrees to the shot. Most shots are not going to give you a 90 degree entry into the rail. Most shots are going to be at an angle. So if we take this shot here, okay, Actually, let me, let me just move this over to this side so that you can see this, okay? If this is our shot, this is our tangent line. Move it out about an inch. That is our tangent line. Can you see that line? Okay. Most shots are not going to be 90 degrees. They're going to have an angle like that. Okay, if that's the case, and we hit it with a stun shot, we know that running English is to the left, correct? With a true stun shot. If we stun back, we get an angle more like this, okay? And those start at the same place. I know I'm using pens and not lines. Um, we get just a little bit more angle. And if we stun forward, we actually get our 90 degree to the rail angle in this case. Okay? Can everybody understand that? So, we have a wholly predictable way of determining, and by the way, it doesn't matter where the cue ball is, the, the tangent line is the same, right? We talked about that when we talked about the tangent line. No matter if I'm here, or here, or here, or here, or here, doesn't matter. The tangent line, the black pen in this case, the center line, is the, exactly the same. Okay, so, why do I say that that shot, the, that running English could be either way? Well, the answer is that if I choose to stun it, right? Then the cue ball is going to be coming back this way. That's the tangent line for this, right? The tangent line is coming back this way, which means that it's running English would be to the left because the English, you want the English to be in the direction of travel, right? And you see that the cue ball runs, yes? However, If we were to take that same shot and we were to stun it forward with left, instead we get the opposite effect. We get the reverse. You see that? So if we were to stun this forward with right hand English, then we pick up our running English. See how that ran the, the direction that we wanted? Okay, much easier to control using stun. And it doesn't matter which, which side I'm on, I can be over here and it's the same thing. If I, if I stun, if I stun back with right hand English, then I come back. If instead, I stun forward with right hand English. Uh, okay, I missed the shot. But you saw that the cue ball came and went went straight out instead of coming back down the table, right? Okay, and we're going to talk about that. This is entering the rail. We're going to talk about exiting the rail next uh, in the next video. So Entering, and, and by the way, these are all basic concepts that we're going to talk about one piece at a time, then we're going to put them together on shots, and then we're going to put the shots together on racks, okay? So we will get there. It's going to take us a little while to get through all of it and set up the, the information for the various shots, but when we're done, you will be shooting the, the high percentage shots with the high percentage routes 
with the high percentage English. And so, and if it, and, and unless you're A or above, you will not be shooting the suboptimal shots. Again, my purpose here is to teach you how to win games, not how to make spectacular shots. If you want to make spectacular shots, go watch Florian Keller. Go watch uh, old videos of Mike Massey and Steve Miserak when they were doing trick shot championships. And trick shot championships are no joke. If that's where your heart is, is in the, the fancy, fantastic shots, by all means, go be a trick shot artist. Let me tell you right now, the trick shots at the, the trick shot championships at the when you're at the highest level of trick shots, it's harder than the highest level of gameplay. No, no kidding. The pressure on each shot is absolutely immense. Um, I have not played trick shots. I was never interested in trick shots. I was interested in winning tournaments. Uh, and at the time, I thought it would make me famous. But uh, <laughs> uh, that, yeah, that wasn't in the cards. I, I also didn't get rich playing pool, which uh, actually nobody does, um, except the very highest level players. Uh, and some hustlers. Anyhow, back to, back to the shot. So what, what I'm telling you is that the vast majority of shots that you shoot, you're going to want to use one of the three forms of stun to get to the rail uh, and to choose in which direction you want the cue ball to move. If I want the cue ball to move to the right on this shot, that if I want it to, to hit and then go that way, I'm going to stun forward with right hand spin, right? Stun forward, right hand spin, and the cue ball moves that way. If I have the same exact shot at the same exact angle, and I want the cue ball to go this way, I hit it with stun back and left. And now the cue ball comes this way. If I want the cue ball to go straight up and down the table, then I, I stun it slightly forward with no spin to get the 90 degree angle entering the rail. Then I come straight up the table. Okay, so the three things you need to be able to do to control entering the, angle, entering the, the rail is you need to be able to stun forward, stun back, and just stun. Okay, so a stun shot is a soft shot, right? That's, that's a stun shot. <coughs> Stunning forward means I'm hitting it just slightly high. What I want to do is I want the cue ball just to roll a couple of inches forward. I, do, I want to hit it solid. But I want the cue ball just to roll a couple inches forward. I don't want it to... I don't want it to take off. We're not trying to follow it. We're not trying to follow it. We're trying to stun it forward. A little bit above center, maybe a little bit of a downward angle. Hit it solid and let the cue ball just wander forward just like that. That's stunning forward. Stunning back. Same thing, but we're going to hit just a little bit lower than where we hit when we were shooting our draw, or shooting our stun shot. And again, we want to hit it solid and have the cue ball just come back a couple of inches. That's called stunning back. Okay, so practicing it, set yourself up a shot, practice stunning forward a couple of inches. Try to get out here, maybe just in front of where the ball is. Stunning back, try to get back just a couple of inches. You don't want to draw all the way back to where you started. You want to, you want to just come back a couple of inches. Make sure you're hitting it with your medium strength stroke. You, you don't get to cheat on this by hitting it softer. Oh, and by the way, practice your stop shot too. Those are the three shots to practice out of this. That's it. Those are the, the main angles going in. Now, if you, can, if you watch pro matches and you think about entering the rail, what you will find is that the vast, vast majority of shots, they are stunning to the rail and spinning out to the leave 
and they're using one of the forms of stun, they're either stunning back or stunning forward, to, to get their next shot. So let's say they've got a shot like this. And let's say the two balls over here, right? What are they going to do? They're going to stun because our tangent line is already coming back in the correct direction. They're going to stun with right hand spin to get down here. And they're going to try to use it to get close to their shot, right? That's, that's all they're doing. You can get everywhere on this table using a version of stun and spin. What if I need to get down there? I can stun forward with left hand spin, which is running English. And I go that way. Okay, I may have overhit that a little bit, but you see that I was coming down, down the right angle. It's the same shot. I'm just shooting it with stun and spin. What if I needed to get over here? <clears throat> stun it forward with no side spin. You see, you can get everywhere on the table with stun and spin. The only times you really need to use draw and follow when you're using a rail is if you are uh, if your your main route is blocked and you have to go around the ball um, and we'll talk about the routes and we'll talk about the spins to get around the routes and all that kind of stuff and top and bottom and all that but for now the vast majority of shots are stun and spin are stun stun to the pocket or stun to the rail spin to the leave so what if I have this shot, right? How do I get on this two ball? Well, in this case, the route that I want to take, and again, we'll talk about routes at length, but the route I want to take is stun to the rail, spin down the line of the leaf. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, in this case, it's just going to be stun, and I'm going to put a specific type of English on it. Uh, it's just a little bit of left. Um, it will be on the line to 1130, uh, and I'll show you why in another video when we talk about spin. But this is just stun to the rail, spin to the leaf. See, now all the way down that line, I've got a shot on that too, right? I do want to be clear that we're talking about shots where you're going to use a rail for a leave. And you should use a rail for a leave almost always. Okay, if you don't have, if you're not going to use a rail to a leave, then the angle doesn't matter for purposes of this discussion. If you're going to draw straight back and not use a rail, then this, this, the entry into the rail doesn't matter. Obviously, if you're not using the rails, the entry to the rail doesn't matter. 